Hey guys, so welcome to Subscribers Draw My Nails episode 5. I almost showed my nails. I'm gonna try to not talk with my hands how I normally do so you guys can't see the nails already. If you are new here, this is a series I do where you guys draw me a nail design and I try my best to recreate it in real life and that's what we're doing today. Also, thank you to McCart for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate the continuous support. I will be using a ton of McCart products in this video as usual, and you can get McCart all over. They ship internationally off their US website, as well as they have a Canadian website, a UK website, and an EU website. So if you see any of the McCart products in this video that you like and you wanna try out, you can use my code Emily Susanna for 15% off your entire purchase. And once again, thank you, McCart for sponsoring this video. This time I received almost 450 submissions since I did change up how I do it. So before we get into the designs I chose, I want to do a couple shout outs of some really great designs that I loved because there were so many good ones. I think I favorited like 60 or 80 out of the 450 that I was considering doing. So I almost actually did this one, but when it came time, I put a poll on my Instagram to sort of help me choose which major design element I wanted to do for each set that was submitted. This one did not get picked, but I love the idea of a glitter globe. So thank you, Danny, for drawing that and submitting it. I think it's a really cool idea. One day I do wanna to try to do a glitter globe. That sounds cool. This design by Allison I thought was so cool and it's so well drawn. It's such a good idea. So many 3D elements. Bowser inspired is definitely not something I would have thought of, so I thought this one was really cool. This one by Jack Saba. 07 is really cool and it's the only one that got submitted with this lipstick shaped nail I haven't done a lipstick shaped nail before but at some point I hope to we'll see and then this one from Jen was also one of the ones that I almost did because I thought the poly gel swirl and the big butterfly would be super fun to do there were also a ton of really cool Halloween designs that were submitted and you guys know I am like a Halloween year-round type of person but with Halloween being so close and because I will do a dedicated Halloween episode of one of these. I didn't do these, but these ones were super cool and I urge you guys to resubmit these designs when Halloween does come around because I did love them. Like this one with Bailey, I love this 3D bat design. Super cool, super fun. Another like traditional Halloween, you know, black and orange one. I also love that you added the ring because, you know, sometimes I make a ring nowadays to match the sets. I haven't done that in a little bit, but I should get back to doing that. Then also a, another really cool Halloween set by Kai. And then I also wanted to give a shout out to Claire who actually printed the template out and drew on it that way. A lot of you tell me you're not good at like drawing on your phone or whatever, you don't have to. You can draw on it any way you want. You can print it out and draw on it and then just take a picture of that. That is totally fine with me any way you guys want to. Then of course we have a bunch of really cute Sanrio designs like this one from Francesca. This one by Coco, one that I thought was absolutely adorable is this one by Elle who inspired this design from this cake, which I thought was really fun. So once again, thank you to everyone who submitted designs. And if you do go and recreate one of these designs that I just showed or the ones that I do, please make sure to credit the original person who did design these because I didn't design these nails. So please remember to do that if you do choose to use one of these designs. So for our first design, I'm going to be doing this B one from Teresa. I hope I'm saying that right but I just thought this one was so cool. And when I asked you guys if you guys wanted like a poly gel swirl, 3D honeycomb, or like the glitter globe, you guys said 3D honeycomb. And I think that is such a cool idea and a fun challenge. So this is the first design that we are going to go with. So let's get into it. Okay, so this first design that we're going to be doing, their notes are that the white dots are sparkle glitter and the ring finger is honeycomb in 3D. So I think we can do that. Okay, so I'm gonna be starting with my McCart pump up extra, extra long full cover ballerina tips. And for this one, we're going to be doing the Femi Beauty method. And I'm just sizing these out right now. I do already have like a little base coat on my nail, as you can see. Um, because as I say, they were crusty dusty and no one wants to look at that. I have my tips and we're gonna try to go one at a time. So I'm gonna use like these little things and put some tacky clay on here so that it will stick and we can do the underside with our color. So the first thing that I'm going to do is take my Gel X Prep tip primer 
and I'm just going to prime this all over this tip because we will be putting poly gel under the entire side. And because there are little glitters, I decided to go with this hexagonal glitter from Dumb Blonde Glitter and it's even called Honey, so it's perfect. So to put some glitter on there, I'm first gonna grab my base coat and just do a thin layer all around. So I'm just going to stick random ones all around and it's nice because all of these are hexagonal, which should match our theme perfectly. I do want to try to match, you know, these drawings as close as possible. A lot of you said, you know, I want to give you creative freedom, but I want you guys to have creative freedom with this. Some of these might get drawn over with the bees. That's fine. I just want to make sure that it's all in place regardless. And then I'm just going to flash cure these basically from the other side. So that way just the glitter won't move when I put the poly gel on. I don't want to like a super hard cure because I want the tip to still be able to flex a tiny bit. I think I'm going to go with this and this one's from the Ebba Rouge collection. And I think that this one fits perfectly. I think it's like the exact color that they drew. So I'm just going to put a little on the underside like this. Grab my brush and we're going to just push it around and try to cover up all the clear. And you really wanna make sure you get it up on all of the sides because otherwise it can look a little wonky. And then with my base gel, I'm literally just gonna smooth it out. You can use base gel as sort of a slip solution. I don't always, but it does do a really good job at smoothing. I don't really think it does as good of a job when you're trying to move the poly gel around, but if you just wanna smooth it out, I think base gel does a really good job. Okay, so I've taken it off from the form and it looks really good to me. I'm gonna now try to just pop this on our nail. Okay, so here we go. You can see some of my base gel from underneath, but that we can deal with later. I did have quite a thick layer of gel on my nails where that is, but that's fine because we're gonna be drawing on here anyway, and I can also just go over the top with some poly gel if I need to, but otherwise I think it looks really good. Otherwise, I'm just going to round off the sides of these to make them fit my nail a little bit more. And we're basically gonna do the exact same thing for all of the base nails because most of design is drawn off or like sculpted on top. Okay, look at how cute these are coming out. Put this on this nail. Needs a tiny bit of filing around the cuticle, but look at how perfect this one looks with the little glitters. Okay, so I basically am going to do the exact same thing for all of them, including this one, even though this is going to be our base, I think it'll be good to just have the color underneath. So I'm just going to sort of zoom through, through these next couple nails for you guys. That way we can get on to the fun part, which is decorating, of course. Okay, so all of that is on. You can vaguely see all of that. There you go, you can see that a little bit better. So I am going to sort of file around the edges and just clean everything up a little bit so that when we put on our nail art, everything goes on super duper smooth. So I'm gonna be using my McCart drill and no, I always tell you guys about this one, but I was just thinking this still has a full battery. I know I've told you guys my biggest complaint with this is that the LED screen is not bright enough, but I mean, like I can see it, but you guys can't see it on camera, but if you guys can tell sort of, um, this still has a full battery. I could not tell you the last time I charged this. I think I charged it when I first got it. It's still charged and I use this every single time I film doing my nails. This thing will stay charged forever and it's really good. And I'm just gonna go sort of around my cuticle and make it a little bit more flush get any little bits of poly gel that have scraped out. I'm 
I'm only using this on nine, by the way. I know some people think that I should be using it higher, but I think it's best to go a little bit slower and make sure you don't nip yourself rather than just go through. I mean, this does go super high, let's see. So this goes all the way up to 35 and it does just like, but I don't wanna do that. That's also how loud it gets if you do wanna turn it up all the way. And then I'm going to just go over with a finer side of a buffing block and just buff the top just so lightly and around the cuticles, just, you know, super smooth. And you guys, I know my like cuticles and everything are a wreck. I have had quite a tough um, past week personally, just dealing with some stuff. And I, I don't know why this happens to me, but um, if I do my nails on a tough day, sometimes I feel like no matter what I did to them, I don't like the nails and I kind of end up in sort of a panic. Um, I don't know if I classify as a full panic attack, but I definitely get um, panicked and a little overstimulated and I sort of rip off the nails like as fast as I possibly can, which is obviously not good. And I'm absolutely not as careful as I should be trying to get them off with the file and everything like that. And so I, I wrecked my cuticles, honestly. I really, that's something I really am trying to work on, but you know, life happens, things happen. Um, but the nails look really good to go so far. And I'm just really wiping everything off with rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is your best friend if you do poly gel. Get like giant jugs of it. It really will save your life with any stickiness or anything like that. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with this one yet if I'm going to fill in some yellow or if I'm just going to try to like color match it with some gel. But what we're actually going to do first is our honeycomb nail. So I am definitely looking at a lot of honeycomb and who this is honestly gonna be really hard. I think I may use kind of like a combination of a little bit of a more orangey one and this yellow. I will mix those together and build the honeycomb with that. That way there's just a little bit more of a distinction. And then of course we'll have to make some honey to put on, which I'm really excited to do because that's gonna be a custom one that I'm gonna be able to like mix up. So let me get a little slab to mix our poly gel on. Okay, I really have faith that this is gonna go good because I'm actually in a really good mood today. So I'm gonna, I don't know how much I'm gonna need. I'm hoping not a ton. I don't know how tall I'm gonna make the honeycomb. I think like this much orange. And then I'm just gonna use my slab tool. I'm gonna just put as little of this as I can in there, just a little bit of like some mica to make it a little bit more golden. Something I have 100% learned with the micas is you have to, like they are so incredibly pigmented that like that much will probably be enough. I just wanna add like that little bit of like a, you know, like a bronzed honey glow. Like look at how much that was. Like that definitely did something there. Does that look like a honeycomb colored hue? Kind of looks like a caramel to me, but like as a bay, oh, you know what, I don't know. Do y'all want a video on me just making custom poly gels? Okay, this looks like a better color. Like it looks like it has a little bit of that like golden honey. I am perplexed of how this is going to start to be honest. Okay, I'm just gonna start with one in the middle perhaps. I don't know. You know what I also do have? Like squeezy gel that could potentially work better. And actually that's probably good because I probably should have put a base coat on here anyway, just to help with the extra adhesion. Okay, so I'm gonna actually just draw with this. Okay, yeah, this is a much better decision. There you go. You can sort of see that. Um, so that's what I'm gonna sort of start with and then I'm gonna build off of there. You know, these honeycombs are not gonna be perfect. I'm truly gonna try my best. Okay, so this is going to be number two for our Base, and I feel like you can just see it so much better now. Okay. 
I think I did them too skinny. You can sort of tell, like you get the, you get the idea, but it's not the same. So I think I'm gonna just quickly take this off and start over with a different plan. So new plan. I have this really bright yellow that I should hopefully be able to see on here. Whoa, that's really bright, that's okay. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw the honeycomb on before I do the 3D, so that way I have something more distinct to follow. This look all, I feel like this looks really like blown out. So I turned down the thing, which is gonna make my cuticles look crazy red, but they're not. It just like the camera settings like intensify every color. There we go. That looks much more like an actual honeycomb. much better right like the shape of this like I'm not gonna be able to get it like the perfect shape but like I just feel like that's so much more realistic I guess so now we're gonna try to draw this on so even though gel generally stays where you put it um I would recommend to not just like do the entire thing and to cure it when you're after you've done like maybe half because at some point gel will slowly move and you don't want, if you're twisting your hand around and stuff like that, you don't want to move it all over. I feel like bees are special to me for like such a small reason. Me and my husband always just call each other bee and I think that just derived from us being lazy. It ended up being shortening like babe or whatever. But now we just call each other bee and we give each other like bee themed items and stuff like that. And also bees are important. Ecosystem, make sure to support your local beekeepers. I'm gonna try to use this poly gel now. You can generally get like local honey. Honestly, like um, a lot of like local antique shops around me have local honey, your local farmer's market, even sometimes your like local health food market. I know like my Whole Foods sells like local stuff. And so yeah, just try to look. If you're gonna get honey, try to get it from a local beekeeper. So I'm really with this, just trying to build up the walls because it's taking a really long time with just that gel because the gel goes on, you know, so thinly. Okay, so I'm basically just gonna spend a couple minutes building up these walls and I'll check back because this has been going on forever. So I have all of this. So I'm actually going to file it and make it all even because when I filed the last try off, I thought it looked a lot better, like sort of smooth and stuff. Okay, so here we are with this. I am honestly and truly um, a little perplexed at how we're gonna create this honey color. So first we're going to need a lot of top coat. And I think we're gonna try this chestnut color because it is sort of a really warm like amber color. Amber is the color that I'm like thinking of for this. And I'm just gonna put that little bit in there. Hopefully that's not too much even. Okay, actually, I think that looks pretty similar. It's just this does have some shimmer in it. I don't have any like matte pigments like that. Uh, I should probably get some. Just like a big glob. This nail is getting so heavy. 
So I'm gonna just tell you guys what I'm gonna do with this and then I'm gonna do it and then we're gonna move on because I know I've been on this now forever. So it does have all of this. It's kind of chunky though and I feel like it doesn't sort of go as well with these like really thin nails. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to encapsulate this a little bit and I'm just going to clean up everything, make it smooth on top, but it should look practically the same, just like kind of encapsulated. Um, and I'm just gonna do that really quick because we've been on this nail for so long now and I know people have probably just like skipped at this point. So let's move on, I'm just gonna. Okay, wow. I am so happy that I did that. Look at how nice that looks now. I was like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to trust the process, but the process did not fail me. What we're gonna do now, so I'm just gonna wipe that off. Ooh, look how good that's gonna look with a top coat. Anyway, I'm gonna wipe off all of these nails because at this point they got so much dust on them, probably who knows else what. And we're gonna start drawing the bees. I wanna do bees similar to their actual drawing because I think these are really well drawn. Um, I'm going to start out, let's do the thumb. And they do have one like coming out of it, so I think I'm gonna cover up a lot of this. So I'm gonna do a matte top coat because that absolutely helps a ton with everything coming out smoothly and I don't know, it just does. So matte top coat here. I'm gonna be using a lot of black and white. I love these black and whites from Car. These are some of my favorite because I feel like they're a little thicker than some of their other gel polishes and I think it works really, really well and they're really pigmented. I think I'll probably use this yellow. This could end up being too neon, but we'll see. And then we'll also need this blue. And then for the majority, I'm going to be using this detail brush from Enel Couture. Enel Couture has the absolute best brushes. Like, it was a total game changer from after I discovered these. I feel like my drawing has just gotten so much better. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do first is I'm going to get some white and I'm going to outline where I'm going to want the bees in white so that we can draw over it and it'll be like perfectly opaque. Some antennas. I am curing in between a lot of these steps. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start off with every color that's not black since black is going to be the main outline color and I'm just going to do the wings. Next is the yellow. So I'm gonna just do some lines. And now finally, we'll add the black. I hope I don't jinx myself, but can you guys believe how steady my hand has been today? I mean, I have a lot of these bees to draw on. So I'm gonna be here for a while, but I feel like I'm, I'm like having like really positive time today, which is good because you guys know sometimes I get really frustrated, but I feel like I'm really happy with my choice of design. To be honest, I still have not chosen the next one when I'm filming this. I'm gonna be honest, I'm really impressed with myself. I'll be more impressed if I can do it one, two, three, four, five more times, but I'm really happy with this. So I already did one on this one. This one, obviously on their picture, there is two more up here, but I don't think two more would fit. So I'm going to do this other one on this one. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's the other B. I'm actually so happy with how this turns out. So I'm actually just going to straight up top coat these because I don't want to mess them up or get like any dust on them for whatever reason. So I'm gonna go ahead and just top coat this one. I love it, it looks so pretty. And then at the same time, I'm gonna top coat our honeycomb one because I just feel like it's time. It really does look like honeycomb. 
Okay, honestly, so far, this might be some of my favorite nails ever. Time to draw the rest of these on. And then I just realized that I have a couple like other little small details like the drip on the middle finger which I'll have to remake my honey because I used all of it and then these other little ones that are drawn on over here on this nail here in Tennessee we have these huge bees I don't know what exactly they're called I th thought they were called like wood bees or something like that and I'm gonna pop up a picture <laughs> of and I think it was two years ago, I was taking Halloween pictures and a bee like charged at me for absolutely no reason. And I just think it's like the funniest picture exact moment that I saw it. <gasps> you know my problem? I didn't put a matte top coat on this. Oh no. And while I'm at it, I'm just gonna top coat everything else as well. That way I do not forget. finish the space also i also want you guys to let me know i know i haven't done one in like a really long time maybe i don't know if you guys want me to do like another let's like chill chit chat and nail sort of video i was gonna do one for my birthday nails and i just got too overwhelmed with stuff i just i feel like i plan it out and I'm like okay and then I just put too much on my plate and then it just like didn't end up happening which I wish I would have like the nails actually turned out really well and I really loved them but also at the same time I felt like they were really simple and I didn't know I don't know let me know if you guys want those those don't always do super well but I know that the people that like them like really like them I'm just gonna try to sort of zoom on through these next ones. I'm gonna be totally honest with you guys. I've been doing these nails for five hours now. Granted, I do take my time. I do try not to rush because I do want it to be the best it can be. Um, but I've been here for quite a while and I think honestly it was this one's fault. Like, I felt like if I had known I was gonna encapsulate it from the beginning and stuff like that, it would've been easier. But you know, trial and error takes time. So far, don't the middle one's still being worked on, but holy, shit, those look really good. God damn, those are really good, V. Thanks, you're doing a great job. Thanks. Okay, so I finished all of the bees, and now we just have a couple very small details. So I'm gonna make some more of that honey color. So I'm just taking some more top coat and then this chestnut shade once again, like just the smallest amount because I feel like it just goes such a long way. 
I'm gonna do just the little drip on the middle finger. Like I just feel like, I mean, it should be pretty easy. I'm also going to put the top also and we'll just top coat this one now. And then I'm just going to, I think, fill these in like a tiny bit. That way they're not so stark. Just like a little bit, not a lot. Sort of just like what's the extra bits with this top coat. As usual, I will show you guys the full like before and afters and results at the end of the video. So for our next design, I had a really hard time choosing. I was choosing between this one and this one by, and I hope I'm saying this right, it's the Stefani Versace, but I asked you guys if you wanted me to do something really detailed and specific or something with open to a lot of interpretation and you guys said really specific. So that's what we're going to go with and wish me luck, let's get started. So these are extremely long nails. So I broke out the 5XL from you know couture and i'm just going to size these out my only problem with all of these like 5x ones is they are always so the apex is so high that my flat nail beds always have a hard time kind of work on that we'll customize them a bit today i feel like when i like i'm able to like sort of flex it a bit and stretch it out, it ends up fitting much better. For these tips, I'm obviously going to stretch them out a little bit. Look, it'll fit so much better on my actual nail. So what I'm going to do basically is usually, you know, use our tip primer as I do all the time. Some of you say these ones are pre-etched, but I just don't want to take any chances. And I'm actually going to be putting these on with just a clear poly gel because when there's so much space to fill, if you're trying to do like some sort of soft gel or base gel or extend gel or whatever, I feel like it just ends up being a big mess. So I'm going to just put some poly gel there. There's so much room to fill. And then I'm just going to push that around a little bit. I don't know if this will be a good amount of poly gel or if it'll be too much. It usually takes me a moment to get the feel of how much I'm gonna need. Probably is too much. And let's see. Yes, much better, much more comfortable this way. Okay, so now I'm gonna just bend this one a bit and then also and then with the poly gel, like, probably like It's been a real long time since I've had nails on this long. I'm excited. We got the long nails on. I'm just going to tidy up the edges on all of these, file any squished out poly gel. Okay, so I have this hand. Honestly, it's been a day or two. I do have some like white staining on here. This can happen with these sort of tips if you get any alcohol on them. And when you're hand sanitizing your hands all the time, it's bound to happen. But luckily it should work out perfectly because nowhere where I have the staining is gonna be clear. Okay, for some reason, the colors in this are messing with my head because it's not rainbow, but they're, it's almost like, I don't know why my head just wants to be warm. So I'm gonna use this one, this one toucan. I assume that's from the Birds of Paradise. For the orange, I'm gonna use this awesome color. One well, awesome color is just like extension of the McCart brand. And then I'm also gonna use these two. These are probably gonna be like 100% dead matches for the colors in this. I might do a little bit of mixing, we'll have to see. And then for the blue, I'm gonna use this one from Candy Coat and I think this is the closest blue I'm gonna get. I don't even know if that color 
matches that well. I'm gonna try to also mix in some of this. This one says yellow. I don't believe this is yellow. I think this is orange, right? Yes. I only have neon greens and this darker green right here. I feel like it's another one in the middle. So I'm gonna mix this one. These two that I've mixed with some other ones, by the way, these ones, these ones come in little, they're called duets by Makar. I don't think I've ever showed you guys these just cause like I hadn't had a reason to pull them out yet, but they sell like these little doubles that coincide really well together. And then I'm gonna mix some neon green in this one just cause I feel like Always mixing our own custom colors. But to be honest, I mean, I feel like you guys know I could literally sit here all day long and just mix colors. If I hate this one at the end, I may take this off and revisit it, but let's just do the others to see how they turn out before I do that. Since there's like two black, I'm just going to make my lines of where I want the black to be here. there and they stop at about the same on here so i'm going to do it do it on this one i'm going to cure the other one before i fill that up because it's just going to be harder to match the line but luckily we do have rhinestones that are also going to be going on the line of separation. So next we actually have like a little ombre moment that we're gonna do. So I'm basically just going to get a little bit of top coat on there. I'm gonna put top coat here, just on this part where we're going to be putting that. I'm also going to put it on the underside to make sure that we stay clear as possible. We're going to do like a green ombre. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this green and I'm going to mix it with this top coat. And we want something super sheer and we're going to sort of fade it in. And I'm hoping since we already have some top coat on there, it'll seem, it should be just pretty vague. I feel like I love doing these videos because it makes me have to think out of the box of how to do things because I feel like when you draw them out on paper, obviously it's so different than doing it in real life with like nail products and stuff like that. So I feel like I love doing that because I have to always just like figure it out, you know? And I feel like that's something good for me, like to have to be pushed to just kind of like figure it out. You know, we'll do a little bit on the underside too. I think that'll help. And while we're at doing this like ombre clear sort of thing, let's just do the orange. Okay, so we're gonna do what I did last time, which is put white over where we want color because I just don't feel like it will show up well. I'm using a little bit of a longer brush for this because I feel like the longer the brush sort of sometimes the easier it is to get straight lines. I say as like my line is not going straight. I feel like doing this on the nails is actually harder than I thought because these nails are so curved. Like the apex is so high, it just wants to curve. So we have to combat that somehow. Okay, so I'm gonna try to do this the best I can with these colors because they overlap on certain ones. And I actually, I like wanna do this like how it should be. So it looks like I'm gonna try to skip over like the little area here where they meet because there's no reason to just put it on and have to cover it up and it might make it that little one area thicker. You got the yellow here. Okay, good. It's so much easier to like draw on top of the white than it is to just lay the white down. Okay, green next.
Okay, and we're almost done with this nail. We have to put on rhinestones, but I'm gonna put on the rhinestones last so I can do the gel all at the same time. So hard, honestly. I don't know how I'm gonna do this. Um, I'm just going to start off with doing sort of an outline of white. Just start off the triangles. I feel like this would be a perfect time for those spider gel but i have some but i don't think i have some in all of these exact colors so i'm just going to do the majority of these triangles and most of the color on them and i'll be right back Okay, this is definitely not as good as the drawing. Can you believe on like one of the little notes this person put, you will most likely make it look better than this. <laughs> look at this. Like, I will absolutely not make it look better than that. In fact, I will make it look 10 times worse, but I'm doing my best. It's not, it's not a bad set, but like it's definitely not as good when it's so well drawn like this. Like, I don't know how this person did this, but shout out to you, you did a great job. Hopefully it'll look better when I put the rhinestones on and it's like a sharp. Next on this nail, we have something similar. I'm gonna divide the nail. Now we have a pink ombre to do, so I'm just gonna do the same thing I've been doing with that. Just some pink sort of like around the edges essentially okay so hopefully this should be a fun part so now we got a bunch of both sad and happy smiley faces and i'm really just going to Okay, so something happened for a lot of the footage for the rest of this nail and a little bit of the other nail. So instead of just not putting any of that in there, I've gone back and done the designs that I did on my actual nails on a press-on. So you can still see what I did because I actually loved these two nails the most off of this design. And I was really, really, really sad that the footage disappeared. I don't know what happened to it. Um, my camera just decided to not save the file. Okay, so honestly, I think the circles I did on my actual nail turned out better. I feel like I'm gonna start doing this white underneath all of my drawings from now on because I just feel like they look so much better, so much like crisper and like just so much brighter. I just feel like they look really good with the white underneath and even if a little bit of like the white does like shine through on the corners I don't feel like it matters that much I feel like it's kind of hard on these curved surfaces because like here half circles like here it's kind of like I probably could have done that a little better I may go in and touch these up Okay, this is where it's kind of hard because you need like the smallest strokes ever. A happy one over here. This one is excited. I love that they all have different expressions. This one is annoyed. Another happy one over here. 
And then it also had cut off for the start of the pinky nail, but essentially what I did for this one was I just did the whole thing in black as our base, of course. Then I did a white border. I feel like I love how just the white looks also on these nails. Like before you even add any color, I feel like they look really cool just like on their own. Okay, and that's those. So here's this before I put color on it. And then I'm gonna start on the yellow outline. Okay, and then I'm just gonna do a couple random things in here, also yellow. So you guys know that I don't do like a ton of hand-drawn nail art and I'm sure that someone that does it all the time already knows this, but longer lined brushes like this are better for straight long lines and then short brushes like this are easier for like shapes and curves and filling in, in my opinion. I just feel like when you have like a long thing, you can't detail with it, but if you have a short one, you can. Okay, so if you've gotten to this part in the video, I have cut out my original mess for this one because I'm not really happy with how it turned out. It just looks muddy and I'm not happy with it. So I'm actually gonna take it off um, and we're gonna redo it because I want this to be perfect and I just don't feel like this one is. It definitely looks muddy. Um, and the other colors on these are so bright and this one just isn't and it doesn't match. So I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna take this one off and then we will redo it. So I'm back with this nail and I just put a black base on. I'm going to put one more black base on kinda. And before I definitely, definitely like what I don't think was what the person who did this was envisioning because they said like on a black base, which means like the black base should be visible and it wasn't. Okay, so when I first did this design, I sort of did this similarly, but I'm gonna basically just put a little bit of white on here because I want to make sure that the other colors will be able to be seen. And I kind of feel like just on black, like this yellow won't really show. Like it turns sort of like a green color. So I'm just gonna kind of like womp 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 back and forth a bit, just so that there's a little bit of a light base to catch some true color, but obviously enough to where they're still black. So now I am going to cure it like this. And now I'm basically just gonna grab some color and I'm gonna I know it's supposed to be marbled, but I really like the effect that just even this person's picture did, like this like kind of back and forth. Like it does look marbled, but it also looks like, I don't know, more natural, I guess. Okay, time for the blue. It's basically the same thing. I'm gonna kind of just swipe it in and mix it with the pink a little bit, the colors that kind of all just fade together onto yellow. Yeah, see the green and the yellow don't even look different on this. That's okay. I actually like that so much better than my original design. Hopefully you guys will agree. I feel like it almost looks exact, which I'm really happy with. And it looks like pretty much any white that I did put on is covered. Okay, and then we just have to do our black outline, which should probably be pretty easy. And then they indicated that the rhinestones needed to be glow in the dark, which I thought was so interesting because I haven't really seen glow in the dark ones. I mean, I guess I just never thought about it. So I got these ones and then also these ones, but I think probably use these ones. These ones look like they have some smaller ones in there and these didn't look like big rhinestones, but 
I will have to show you guys how these look. I'll put them up to some light and then um, put them in the dark and so we can see because I had never seen them. I just ordered them off Amazon. Okay, so I'm putting these in the light to like sort of charge them for the glow. Here they are in the dark, not super glowy. Some of them are like these ones and this one, but these not really, which is unfortunate. My nails I'm showing you right now, we can't see because they're not glowing. <laughs> So I'm just gonna use my trusty rhinestone glue and we're gonna do it at the line only. Looks good, doesn't it? Wow. And now some blue ones. These ones look almost like a little clear, but they'll work. Okay, now let me show you guys the final results. Thank you guys so much for watching. I love how both sets came out. I think they are both super cool and I really love doing this series. If you also like it, please make sure to give this video a like. It helps me out a lot and lets me know that you want me to keep doing it. And again, if you want to participate, either follow my Instagram or watch out on my community tab here because that is where I post about these. I once again do not accept them in DM. Please do not DM these to me because otherwise my DMs are flooded and I can't get back to you guys who are like asking questions or want to talk about something or anything like that so i hope you guys understand and once again thank you so much for watching and i will hopefully see you next time bye and once again thank you mccart for sponsoring this video